morning and welcome back to my channel. It's been three years since I started gardening. And in those three years, I've used containers, five gallon buckets and raised beds. When I started, I didn't know anything about gardening, gardening let alone raised beds. During the past three years, I've learned some tips that I'm going to share with you on how to grow food in a raised bed. Mistake number one is not knowing or using the correct orientation for your raised bed. For me, I have, or had rather, three raised beds, two wooden and one metal. And as you can tell by the one you're looking at, it is uh, facing north and south. The other two were facing east and west. As far as it relates to the sun, the two facing east and west got what a lot more sun, significant sun, um, than the one that's facing north and south. And as such, they grew, whatever I was growing in them grew better. And but on the flip side, they also got um a lot of afternoon sun when the sun started on um, when the sun sits in the west. Um they got the midday sun and they got the real strong afternoon sun, and that caused a lot of stress on my plants. Mistake number two, irrigation. I do not have a drip system on my plants on my patio. Everything is watered by hand or using my um, water hose. With a raised bed, it is much more convenient and conducive to have a irrigation system. Um, that way you're not spending a exorbitant amount of time outside watering your plants um, either by a watering can or a watering wand or a raised, I'm sorry, or a hose like I, I do. Um, in the future, when I um, do my raised bed um, at the family homestead later on this year, it will have a irrigation system, um, one where I can if I'm watering, let's say, onions, but I don't need to water my potatoes or something like that, I can have a valve to turn either one or both off. Also, being in Florida, you have to make sure that your plants are, are watered thoroughly because of the climate. The humidity will dry them out. Um, and you have to make sure that they're watered. I found myself with the raised bed watering um, here almost three to four times a week just to make sure that uh, the plants had enough water. But that in itself can lead to more problems such as root rot or um, overwatering. Um, like I said uh, previously, during the afternoon hours, my plants sag tremendously, especially in the summer with that over, overhead sun um, and the afternoon heat. It's much stronger and brighter than it is in the morning. Number three is not having good soil. When I first started gardening, um, I would just go and buy whatever was on sale at my local big box, um, either Lowe's. Home Depot, Walmart, um, Tractor Supply, any place where I could find soil on sale and I would use it. Um, but then I started watching um, a YouTuber's channel, Hollis and Nancy's Homestead. Um, and I saw that Hollis was able to make his own soil. So I started doing that too. And now what I do is make my own. I use either cocoa core or peat moss, one part of that. I use perlite, one part of that. I use 
compost and one part of that as well. And then I also add in a general purpose fertilizer. Usually it's on Nature Safe 855 and azomite. And I mix all that up and I use it in my beds. And for the most part, it has worked well for me. My plants are very healthy. Um, when I'm not using any one of my containers, I also refurbish the soil by adding in more compost, um, more uh, fertilizer, more azomite. And I mix that all up and reuse it again. But it's really important to make sure that your soil is healthy. Um, when you're raising uh, vegetables or growing vegetables in raised beds or containers or five-gallon buckets, um, the supply of soil is their only um, outreach of getting nutrients that they will need to grow, unlike plants that are grown in, in, the, uh, in the ground. Uh, their roots can reach out all around to get the nutrients that they need. Uh, you can't do that, or plants can't do that in containers or raised beds. Tip number four is placement. Once these, once your raised beds are placed where you want them, it is not easy to just pick them up and move them. So. Be very sure of where you're going to place them. Um, what you're looking at is where my uh, third wooden bed, wooden raised bed was. And one morning I came out and the raised bed had collapsed and I had soil everywhere. So what I did was just put the soil in a container and left it there. But um, make sure if you're going to use raised beds, that you're confident and sure of where you're going to place them at. And remember that once you put the soil in, uh, moving them, just picking them up and moving them is not necessarily going to be an easy, not easy option. Yes, you can go through the time and trouble to remove the soil and then move, move the raised bed. But that's not an easy chore, and it will take some time to do. Number five, labeling. And it's just as it says it is. When you put your plants in the raised bed, make sure you label them to know what it is you're growing. Some plants look exactly alike when they're small, and then when they get bigger, they diverse. So you don't want to have a plant that you think may be something, and then when it, it matures, it be something else. Um, you can use anything that you want to label. I usually um, have a label maker, and I type it type out what the plant is and the date that I started. And I put it at the beginning of the row of the plants that I'm currently growing. And then sometimes I, I use a magic marker. I've found, however, with magic markers that um, over the course of time, they fade. And it's hard to read it. But whichever works for you, I would suggest just making sure that you label your plants. Tip number six, make sure you have the correct size bed that you are comfortable in growing in. What I mean by that is um, don't bite off more than you can chew. Even though most beds are average between uh, they're either a four by six or a four by eight. There are some beds that are bigger than that. And you can also have beds. You can have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those in your garden. Just make sure that you're able to handle the responsibilities that come along with having 
um, that many beds. Um, make sure that gardening is something that you uh, get enjoyment out of and you grow food to feed your family and try not to let it become a chore where it's something that you don't get enjoyment from anymore. And then your garden will go to by the wayside and you will become frustrated and tired along the way. So I hope you got something out of the video and enjoy my six tips slash mistakes that I've learned along the way that most beginning gardeners, beginning raised bed gardeners make. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, take a moment to consider doing so. I can grow a lot of vegetables by myself, but I can't grow the channel without your help. If you do decide to subscribe, go ahead and hit the like button and also hit the notification bell all so you'll be notified whenever I upload new content. If you're interested in anything that you saw, head over to my website or my Amazon storefront and everything that I use in the garden will be there. So until next time, always remember, even in small spaces such as mine, you can grow a great amount of food for yourself and your family. Stay strong, stay blessed, and grow, grow, grow. Lastly, and most importantly, always give the thanks to God, for without Him, we are nothing. Until next time, take care.